Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. And from time to time, we do this event here on Fighting for the Faith, and it's called Prophecy Bingo, which means this. It's time for Prophecy Bingo! And uh, for this installment of Prophecy Bingo, I have invited my good friend, Pastor George Borghart of Higher Things, uh, to join us for Prophecy Bingo. Of course, standing in also is Joshua Rosebro. Uh, video editor and uh, mastermind behind all the evil things we do here at Fighting for the Faith. And uh, George, glad you're able to join us. Uh, it's great to be here. <laughs> you don't <laughs> sound like it's great to be here. <laughs> I've seen this done before and I don't know if I can survive two hours. Be gentle with me, Rose Pearl. Be gentle. I, no way, no, no way, no way. You're in the company so, of pirates you, now. You I trust, the, the guy beneath me. I'm, <laughs> I don't trust Joshua as far as I could throw him. Right. Now, real quick, George, uh, the people in our in my audience probably have never heard of you, have never heard of Higher Things. Tell us about your organization uh, that you run, in, which I was on the uh, board of directors for, what, 12, 13 years uh, with Higher Things. I only recently retired my my spot. So tell us a little bit about, uh, about uh, Higher Things. Higher Things is a youth organization that was begun about 20 years ago. Uh, centered around the gospel in the ears of youth. Um, We looked around and there was a lot of fluff in, in, in youth ministry. It was watered down. It was, it was uh, centered around a couple of commandments and you know, which commandments those are teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there was a, there was a desire that gospel be the center of everything that was going on. And that was the way higher things began. Colossians 3, 1, seek higher things, you know? And so uh, we're going about 20 years. I think it's the best youth organization on the planet. Uh, Christocentric, uh, tr- traditional in its its worship. Very, very hashtag dare to be Lutheran. I mean, it's just a great, it's a great organization. <laughs> yep. So uh, any organization that, that, um, that does, that, that trademarks dare to be Lutheran, Christ on campus and higher things must be a good group. I mean, must be. So, <laughs> yeah. What's uh, what's really funny is is that people are going to hear uh, you say "dare to be Lutheran" and they're going to equate that with "dare to be Roman Catholic" or uh, it's just, you know. Yeah. It's, um, I know. I know. You came right. out of Rome. So I came out of Rome, and so yeah, definitely not dare to be Roman Catholic. Uh, <laughs> dare to believe that salvation is by grace alone, received by faith alone, and all of that comes from Scripture alone. Dare to believe that that what young people truly need is not more law, but gospel. They need the gospel. And what you're going to learn from me today, if you learn anything, is that I have a low tolerance for anything that isn't Christ and him crucified, which means I suspect I will last one prophet before having an epileptic seizure. But you could just say that I'm like possessed by the spirit and I'm right. full of it. R- right. Yeah. <laughs> Dare to be Pentecostal. So, so, so you're saying you might experience a suddenly. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to hit all <laughs> these words at least okay. once. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's let's go ahead and uh, whirl up the desktop and uh, and let's get the uh, the web browser up. And and just so you know, for those of you uh, joining us. Uh, head over to fightingforthefaith.com. We'll put a link over to this installment of you know on our uh, website, the Fighting for the Faith Prophecy Bingo Card Generator, and you'll notice that there are 30 different cards to choose from. Uh, prior to uh, joining uh, with the Borg card, Borg card, we had him randomly select a number, and we sent him the link uh, to. Yeah, he has card number seven. I let my phone pick mine for me. I just told my phone assistant to choose a random number. Number between one and thirty, and I was given what was I given? <laughs> was it seventeen? I think I was 17. given seventeen. Yeah, I got seventeen. And uh, Josh, you uh, you chose twenty nine. So I did. I chose. 29. All right. So we've we've got all that worked out. And George, if you haven't figured this out yet, I cheat. So um, you know, <laughs> I, I saw I tr- that. Yeah, it's like the house. The advantage goes to the house, and every time one of these guys speaks in tongues, you get to pick the word. Of course, I, they need an interpretation. I mean, it, it's it's not biblical to speak in tongues without an interpretation. I was praying for Josh. He didn't have a prayer. Wilkin <laughs> didn't have a prayer. The last one I saw, it's it, it's the house's money, man. I okay. feel like though I'm going to win. 
You, you feel that. All right. Now, now understand, just because you get a bingo may not mean that you win. You, you, in order to win, you might need a double bingo or a triple bingo. You just never know, you know. So you, you, you got to get keep... 666 bingos. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> there would be like prophetic YouTube channels that would dedicate entire episodes of their content. Did, did you hear that they got a 666 bingo over there at, uh, at uh, Fighting for the Faith and their YouTube channel? Yeah, that, that's how that would end up going down. So I'm, I'm just saying. All right, let's uh, let's get to it, gentlemen. Um, so I'm going to close this tab. There's my bingo card, number 17. And I thought we would just go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off and do this first. So. Not her. Not her. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are you are you ready? Um, okay. As ready as I'll ever be. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, so this is kind of what I'm feeling from the Lord, and the word is time to shift. Now, normally I read the Rhema word, which is kind of the now word of God. Is it, is it, wait a minute, hold on. Isn't Rhema technically the way she's using it, misappropriated Hebrew? Is that what it, that is? It, uh, no, it's actually Greek, and, and so Oh, no. it's, it's Greek. Oh, my, you can't my cheat like that. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to cheat. I'm not trying to cheat. I'm just, I'm not, he, I'm he's just trying to look for an angle you know, you know, to get an advantage here. Well, that, I will say this. The house. Yeah, I will say this, and that is, is that uh, this time around, I've noticed that the the prophets are a little subdued, uh, and uh, I've even thrown in some prophets who are guilty of falsely prophesying that Donald Trump would win the re-election, and uh, so they're in our mix today, just so you know, and we will hear some explanations as to what went wrong, so, you know... (laughs) It's a, it should be interesting, but let's come back to her. But uh, I, I do believe that Rama is one of our uh, buzzwords. Yeah, it is. It is one of the words. All I've right. got okay. it. It's my word. It, it's, it's just. <laughs> it wasn't in Hebrew. It wasn't in Greek, so I didn't recognize it. I'm so excited. I'm on the board. Oh, okay. So you got you got Rama. <laughs> okay, he got it, go. got it. Got it. All right. All right. Okay. Let's keep going here. The beginning of the video, but I didn't feel led to do that today. I kind of felt led to go into some scripture verses, so we can have a biblical foundation for what a shift of the Lord is. <laughs> By the way, shift or shifting, those are, that's the prophecy bingo word. I'm kind of sad that I don't have, she's going to build a biblical foundation for this prophecy. Uh, George, are you impressed? Um, I am, I am glued and riveted to what's coming next. I'm upset right. that you paused. I was ready to okay. go. Let's go. I love the, Let's I love go. the frame I think so. paused on this. <laughs> It was perfect. It was like, right. Sometimes we, we in the church, we say the word shift a lot. And the Holy Spirit does say shift. And But what does that mean? And is that biblical? Spirit. And... You, you, I've got what was spirit. That? I've uh, got spirit. Oh, nice. man. That counts, man. I'm all over uh, Okay. <laughs> How does that make sense? And so I kind of want to go into a couple of different scripture stories. We're going to go into four different stories to kind of give you some biblical foundation for how to apply and what a shift is in your life. The first one we're going to go into is Isaac and Abraham. Abraham is told by God that he is supposed to kill his son and put his son on the altar. And so he gets some wood and he gets ready to kill his son. Now, so God says, kill your son. But as he's about to kill his son, Jesus, what? Oh, I, I, by the way, she, she, she <laughs> threw that up. in. Hang she on a fell second backwards here. backwards into the gospel. Well, here's the thing. Okay, you and I both know that, uh, that the, the gospel is totally prefigured here in this, in this account. And, uh, and, no. and she did mention Jesus, but not because the, the focus of her prophecy is about Jesus. It's more like Tourette's that she has. So, you know, Jesus. All right. So I, I <laughs> sentence and answer. <laughs> would that, would that t- t- my Tourette's was only saying Jesus's name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Let, let's see where she goes here. Let's see where she what goes. What happens? An angel comes and says, stop. You know, the Lord was testing you and you don't have to kill your son. So at that point, he sees a ram in the bushes and the ram goes on there and, you know, and they go back. Now, this is interesting because, you know, sometimes God says something, but it was to test you. Sometimes you have to realize when God is saying something as a test and he's not really going to carry it out. God might tell you to leave someone. God might tell you to leave a place. God might tell you to go. So, George, I just got to ask you, um, 
Can you uh, give me <laughs> just a real quick Christological, Christ-centered understanding of what was going on there with the sacrifice oh. of Abraham's son, his oh, sure. only son? Yes. Yeah, you, you've, you've hinted it there, the repetition of he took his son, his only son, mm -hmm. um, and he goes to a mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, and he looks at his dad. He's like, father. And the guy says, son. You know what I mean? We've got the we've got the wood. We've got everything. Where's mm -hmm. the where's the, the, the God will provide the sacrifice. And then he carries his own cross. I mean, he carries his own wood up uh -huh. up up the up the mountain. It's all about Jesus. Yes, it's, it's a big giant arrow to Jesus. And this she's she has done the thing where she's made it all about us. And it's yep. it's a it's a train wreck. And and. Of course, I imagine it sells. I can't. It's blurry, but I imagine it's got fifteen thousand views. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, fifteen thousand. Uh, it, it, but it, but it's it's just a, it's a train wreck of of how do I turn this from about Jesus to being mm -hmm. about me? And in there, the gift is lost. Um, yep. Because this be, it, it changes from God. God stops Abraham from sacrificing his, his son, but he doesn't stop himself from sacrificing his his, his own son. To save us, so what on God the same exact mountain, by the way, there it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, so yeah, this this can't get any worse. So let's get it over with. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm reminded <laughs> oh, of what the angel babe. says in Revelation 19 that the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's I what was just so angel... sad because there she was. She it slipped out of her mouth, but it was just a Tourette's moment. Yeah, I that's was... right. <laughs> All right, let's keep Go going. Go another way, but it was only to test and see if you will be obedient, okay? Sometimes this is not a permanent thing. And this is what I call a shift. God was telling you to go one way, and now he's telling you to go another. Does that make God a liar? No. Sometimes God puts us through tests. And so if you're in a testing season... Actually... <laughs> it does make God a liar. Yeah, the way she's <laughs> using it does. Oh, man. I want you to leave that person. Uh, but I was just testing you. I or don't really want or you to very, Or very, at the very least, bipolar. Right, yeah. Psych. Yeah. <laughs> it's very capricious. So, God right. of mental illness. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that, God, in a minute, but uh, let's keep going. You here. might feel Lord say something and then say something else. And I just want to encourage you, you're not crazy. Maybe the Lord has shifted and he was testing the motives of your heart. Mm. Mm. The next story I want to talk about is Jonah and Nineveh. Okay, now this is an, oh. another. Okay, you know, you can totally preach Christ from the story of Jonah, too. I mean, Let's see what she does Interesting here. shift, and God shifts what he's going to do here and changes it. You know, I think sometimes we think God doesn't ever change, and he does because he interacts with us as people. He might say something, but we can intercede or we can move in a certain way. And when we intercede or move in a certain way, good or bad, God can then change. Because at the end of the day, he's God. So Jonah tells Nineveh that it's going to be destroyed in 40 days. Flag on the play, flag on the play. <laughs> yes. You're going to note here that all the, that all the prophets are trying to come up with loopholes as to why they're getting their prophecies wrong. Okay. That's what's say. going on here. I was like, now, the God doesn't change as a real gift to us. You know, so yeah. like when, when I look at my life and I see the sins that I have and I'm like, you can't save someone like me, Calvary says that he can, that he did, yep. that he does. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a God who's like, eh, Josh was out. I mean, look <laughs> at the beard. I mean, he's yeah. out. That guy yeah. hasn't left yeah. his basement in a long time. It is time. a strong he's Lutheran out. beard, you heathen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to go charismatic on the beard. I don't, uh, yeah. I don't, know how, I don't suffer from baby face. <laughs> <laughs> God spoke to me today and he told me to shave my beard. I'm just saying. He spoke to you. He changed his mind. Uh, but uh, Yeah. But now, ahead. I'm going to note this. I'm going to note this, that uh, the, the false prophets have been pulling the Jonah card lately as one of their excuses as to why they got it wrong regarding Trump. And here's how their thinking goes. Well, Jonah said 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. And, well, it didn't happen. And they totally ignore the fact that in Jeremiah chapter 18, God says that if he ever sends a prophet to speak judgment 
uh, over a people for their sins, if they repent, that he will relent of the disaster that he's, uh, he threatened them with. So God will relent from judgment, but he won't mm-hmm. relent from the gospel. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's... that's and, that's, and here's the, the thing. Yeah, I mean, if you if you start to kind of tease this out, a little bit of a you know, bonus gospel point here, is that uh, God has has promised and threatened all of us with hell for our rebellion against Him, and uh, and if in you know if God doesn't fall if you know if we, we are we going to fault God when He doesn't follow through and says, well, I've forgiven you of all your sins in Christ. So you'll note that we are brought to penitent faith in Christ, and God relents of the disaster that he has promised for all of us, and that's an eternity in hell. This, so. is, this is the point of Jonah. This is why Jonah yeah. doesn't want to go there. I've no, seen this game played before by you, God. I go over there. I tell them to repent. They repent. You don't destroy them, and then they get bad again, and you have to destroy them. So if we could cut out the middleman, I'm just going to Tarshish. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. and we're missing that because we're having God shifting. Yeah, yeah, so this is her her theology of shift. It's because yeah. of all the sin there. So, but God told Jonah to go and prophesy to them that, okay? He did get a word from the Lord. He didn't get a false word from the Lord. However, then we see in Jonah 3.10 that God saw what they did because they repented and they turned from their evil and God decided that he would not do what he was going to say, okay? Now, we see this in Jonah 4, 1, where Jonah is upset, but it it says it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. You know, I think sometimes people can be labeled as false prophets or out of line with the will of God because they prophesied something and it never came to pass. And sometimes... You know, like Trump, <laughs> like her, you know. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find yeah. the right direction. I'm like, is this like, direction wait, challenge? Wait, wait, wait. I don't know no, what you want. Yeah. Oh, goodness. No, no. If, if if the logic follows, like I'm, 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 you take what she says, like, oh, well, you know, God said he's going to do the one thing. But then if the people repented, then they got the other. I'm sorry, but a penitent nation doesn't get Joe Biden as president. <laughs> True in international number of pressure. <laughs> Okay. I'm <laughs> not touching that one. Because okay. yeah. we got Let's the other guy, too. Let's be real. Yeah. He, he All right. Was, but, but I would say this. Um, isn't, it, isn't it interesting that any parent knows exactly what God's doing? Yeah. Like, if you don't do this, I'm going to send you to your room. But all the while, you're, say, he, you're saying to yourself, please do the right thing so I don't have to punish you. Because yep. I don't want to punish you. Only a bad dad wants to punish you. But I don't want to punish you. So please just... Would you just do what I say so I don't have to punish you? And and these guys, there's no God. God's for uh, the great thing about uh, about our faith, the, the Christian faith. I'm not going to even make it Lutheran. Just the Christian faith is that God wants to save. He wants to forgive. That is his yep. go to. That is his end all. He doesn't give up. He doesn't care about uh, this other stuff. What he wants to do is save. So he punishes in order to save. Go and repent. Mm-hmm. Uh, go and preach repentance unto the forgiveness of sins, toward the forgiveness of sins. He wants to forgive, and so he preaches the law in order to preach the gospel. Yep. But you're right. This is je- this is. I don't know how to say it in a nice way. She's covering her own behind. Is right. that okay? That's it, is that suitable it, it, for Christian it, it, radio? She's she's covering her assets. So <laughs> that's a very good way of saying it. That's yes, why you're right. the pro. And I'm just yeah. the rookie on the show. So, <laughs> okay. all right, let's let's move along here. Let's move along. Thank and God. Uh, Thank goodness. Oh, no, here no. comes JoLynn Whitaker. I don't oh, think uh, no. y- you've seen her yet, uh, George. We have some new people this time around, and so this is the prophetic word for February, part two. She has so much prophetic words for February. She had to cut it up into two really long live stream. So let, let's uh, let's drop the playhead and see where we go here. Just the other day, the Lord on uh, the prophetic word for February part one, because today is going to be part two. Glory to God. But on part one, the Lord really had taken me into the book of Joel, which I'm going to be prophesying more deeply into on Friday. Amen. But today we've got to stay with, the, with what the Lord has given me for today. But he said, it's time to wake up the mighty men and women of war. It's time to wake up the mighty men and women of war. Yes. If they're mighty men and women of war, what are they doing sleeping? 
You know, that's my question. You know, I got, I got a question for you before she starts. You've done this a lot and they uh-huh. all use the same books. So what book have you never heard them reference? I'm just curious. That, I mean, like, that, like, that, I got, that, like, I've only watched this a couple of times. It's like they have only like their Bible contains only a few books, but I've never, yeah. like, I heard a prophetic word from first Timothy. Never happens. No, no, you know, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> James, and especially have they first ever Timothy two. Uh, I imagine really they love them themselves some James. James. You know, e- even these folks avoid James like the plague because uh, the, the, one of their claims is is that in order for a prophetic word to be true, uh, it has to you know be affirming. You know, and uh, I don't know if you've noticed this about James; he can be in your face. So, <laughs> lamentations. You know. They never touch that one. <laughs> no, they, they never touch one. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Yeah, and I don't think I've seen them pr- touch Jeremiah it, with with it, with the exception of like the opening chapters. But let's keep going. Here. I've got my war boots on again t- today. Glory to God. And what is the Lord saying to us regarding that? Again, we're going to go deep. What is God talking to me about your war boots? <laughs> okay. Deeply into it on Friday, but right now we have to stay with what the Lord gave us on today. It's time for you to recognize who you are in Christ. It's time for you to revisit. And for some of you, it's time for you to revisit what it is that you, I feel the Holy Spirit on this. Mm. There is such mm. an anointing on this. Ooh, hold on a second. Hang on a second here. I've got the, uh, uh, the word anointing. Ding. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I have to do my own sound effects. All right, let's uh, wait. Wait, let me, <laughs> let me put that away. Here we go. There here. is such an anointing on this. It is time for you to revisit what it is that the Lord called you to do, what it is that he told you he was going to do. What What is the dream that the Lord put on your heart? Dream is a prophecy bingo word. What did he call did, you to do? Wait, did she have a camera change in a live stream, like a snap zoom, just like boom, a like different camera angle. I don't know. I I think she I, did. I if you back it up, like oh yeah, yeah look at that. Yeah, yeah. she did. Like it's, I, it's, it was very tech, abrupt. Man. Like ugh. <laughs> yeah, she's she's got a 4K camera. It looks like the same camera angle she just punched in. So. All right. What are your gifts? What are your uh, blessings? What is the anointing? Blessing and anointing are prophecy bingo words. Blessing, I got blessing. Uh, Woo. Oh what is right. your destiny? Come on. Destiny is a prophecy bingo word. Most people, I find when I talk to people, most people, even if you feel lost, even if you had a, a crazy season that sapped the life out of you, even if you have had experiences that have landed you in a desolate place, in a dry place, even if you are... George, have you been in a desolate or dry place lately? I live in Louisiana. It's always no, wet. Like, yeah, it's always wet. Okay. All right. <laughs> so this doesn't apply to you, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. lost, man. I'm lost. For, for those of you who have Louisiana fungus and uh, an algae grown on you, you know, then, you know, okay. Right. Still in the midst of a storm. If you give me a few moments with somebody, it doesn't take long. If you give me a few moments with somebody, most people know exactly what they, what, what they feel in their spirit they're here to do in the earth. And it's got to do with your natural abilities. It's not. It's got to do with your natural talent. It's got to do with the dream that you have in your heart. It's got to do with that, with the vision that you return to. She is really gifted at like talking and talking and talking and not saying anything. I think vision is one of our words, but I don't have it on my card. But mm-hmm. yeah. all right, let's keep going. Again here. and again, even calling. Though I have that calling? word calling. Uh, all right, that, that counts. Ah, nice. Oh, so I excited. do too. Uh, all right, hang on a second here. <laughs> uh, I got it as well. Yay! It's no ding. fun, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I haven't even got to cheat yet. So hang, hang on. Let's see. Seems completely impossible. But the Lord said this won't be for everybody. There are going to be some people who fall off. There are going to be some people who this is just you know they're not ready for. But I believe that you are. George, are you ready for this prophetic word? Uh, I've, I've, I mean, I've been preparing for the last 24 hours for this. I mean, well, Nora, <laughs> think about the doubt that she's sowing in people's brains. Well, some of you just aren't ready for this. And you're, you're just not ready for it. Like, Do yeah. I, am I one of the people that's ready? I don't know. I think, yeah. I think Roseboro hit this. Uh, Chris hit this really well. I mean, this is the out. If what comes, if what mm-hmm. doesn't, if it doesn't happen, you can always fall back on. Yeah. On yep. you just didn't believe. She is immune. 
to being a false teacher because it, it's just because George Borkhart didn't believe. Well, yeah, I didn't have enough faith. Contingency I didn't have, plan. I mean, right. it, yes, that's, that's well played. That's what yeah. young played, young man. You may get I, out I, of that basement just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it is his basement. It's not his mom's. It so is my you own need to basement. Understand. Oh, yeah, so you're already ahead basement. of my son. So. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I hate to say this, but uh, I can kind of see Joe Lynn Winokur on the other end of a phone line telling somebody that they need to immediately head over to Walmart and buy a gift card uh, in order to pay their taxes. You know, <laughs> we'll pay Western Union. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move along here because we have a lot of profit. All right, so uh, here's um. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> is it who I think it is? Yes, is it Santa? It is, it, presents are we're, coming. We're, we're heading presents over to coming. Glory of Zion I and know, yeah. the. <laughs> The name of the prophecy is I am changing your shift. You know, th this... Oh, I actually hear the Lord saying something. And let me just prophesy it because I Sappy don't music. quite understand Sappy it. music. Yeah, that counts. Sappy music counts. Yeah. All, right. All right. So Santa's prophesying right now here. He said, I'm changing shifts for you. I gotta breathe. <laughs> it didn't even sound like God's he said changing shifts. shifts for me. I think he, okay, I think so the he A shift is done. Shilfs. So that so the A team is done, and now the B team comes in, and they yeah. work for eight hours, and then the C team works for another eight hours. Shifts. Oh, I see what you're saying. God's changing. Sh it's I. I didn't even think about that. You know that that would help. Uh, how many shifts about, do we have working here at Pirate Christian Media, Josh? We, we don't talk about we don't talk about the night shift. Oh yeah, that's right. We don't talk about the night shift. All right, okay. <laughs> Let's keep going here. I say you've been working in certain time frames, and you've been working in certain shift structures. Are you sure God the Holy Spirit's saying that? You know, he, he's going to need to speak in tongues to say anything intelligible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he, and he goes down to. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Good but night. I say to you this day, I am changing your shift. And you know he's 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 speaking for God in the first person. I I am changing, you know. Oh man, wow! Some of you who have been on the second shift will be on the first shift. I was some right. Of, I was right. <laughs> Are you some kind of prophet? <laughs> wow! You you speak Santa Claus. I had no idea you knew how to speak that language. Uh, so. This guy. When I was watching this guy, I was like, this is my guy. I mean, I'm a Hawaiian shirt and a beard away from this guy. Okay. Oh. Uh, no wonder God told you to shave your beard off. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's keep you going. If you have been on the first shift, we'll take midnights. I say to you, I am doing a repositioning work. Wait, wait. Hold on. We need an interpretation of the dance I in have... the background. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a, what do you got, Borgard? I'm guard? a foul. I'm a foul. Yeah. Oh. Does repositioning, which includes the word position, count as an X? Yes. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to need a, a vote from the judges because I'm putting an X by it. Done. I'm okay with it. Yeah. You're suffering. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I do want to back this up just to see what Why? is going on <laughs> behind him. No, that, that I think it's interpretive dance. So we have to interpret it. Prophetic interpretive dance. It's not even it, on our card. This is this is this is really prophetically innovative. Be on the on first it. shift. Some of you have been on the first shift. Wax that on, is some wax off. Low energy. That is the most low energy prophetic interpretive dancing I've ever seen. It's like the Happy Hands Club from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Insert clip. <laughs> Oh, man. We'll take midnights. I what? And there's, there's not been a mention of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. at no. all. No. Nothing. No. God, God doesn't want to save anybody. He doesn't want to to, to reconcile <laughs> the world to Himself. 
He doesn't he, want to doesn't take on a sin of the world. Thinking or talking about Jesus in any kind of a lucid sense he, kind of He manner. just wants to change shifts. He is like right. running a factory and he's got to get himself some works. And he's changing okay. from the basement shift to the dude with the green screen behind him. I'm going to probably be in. There are going to be fires of hell behind me, isn't there? I know there is. <laughs> This is by far the greatest. I, 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 I so many editing opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm going to move along here. Um, okay, bye bye, now, Santa. That, and he's so replaced with hearing, Lucifer. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> this guy looks like a Mormon prophet. Anyway, uh, so this, we're, this is the guy who's hosting Encounter Today. And he's going to be uh, speaking to us about Larry Sparks and actually speaking to Larry Sparks about a prophetic word that Larry Sparks, who is like the uh, the head editor of Destiny Image Publishing, uh, which is a major charismatic NAR publishing house. Let's see what they got. Well, the guest we have tonight, he has a ministry that is dedicated to training believers to encounter the presence of God. Active- I, I feel like I'm getting an intro for like, you know... Uh, a major league baseball player who's hitting 300, you know, it, it kind of has that vibe to it. This is like an ESPN intro. Well, how much different is this from, say, a wrestling promo either? I mean, these guys, I mean, this is WWE, except mm-hmm. instead of instead of uh, it being Roman Reigns, it's 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 Larry Sparks. I'm, right. I'm going to go with I like Roman Reigns better. But this guy, he's going to give uh, me right. he's going to tell me how to encounter God. I can't wait. Uh, I I know you're looking forward to this. Uh, this, this, I'm this is why I this. brought you. They, I, was little, I was a little and afraid. Walk in divine transformation. Transformation is a prophecy bingo word. He is the publisher of Destiny Image Publishing Company, and we're so blessed to have him on tonight because he has a word from God for this season. Would you welcome in the comments, Larry Sparks? Season, I think that's a prophecy. Brother bingo Larry, word. it's good to have you tonight. Well, Pastor Allen, always a joy to be with you. Well, you always have a timely word, and you have such access to the prophetic giftings in the body of Christ, and so you're hearing what God is saying, you're flowing in what God is saying. And flow! Flow! flow. Uh, yeah! Flow is a prophecy bingo word. The Lord gave you a specific word that really jumped off the page at me when I read it, and I want everybody watching to begin to pray with their spirit and pray with their understanding, because I think we're going to receive something that's going to really help us step into this new era. Step, step into, into. Yeah, yeah. we're in right now and the word that god gave you was this the show is over can you yeah. unpack that prophetic message for us tonight you know and i want to do this with great sensitivity and great honor but <laughs> okay so great sensitivity when he was yeah. born larry yeah. sparks he was born to do this because, like, yeah. I can't have a, bo- a world ministry. George Borkhart World Ministries and Theme Park, it just doesn't sound really good. But you got Larry Sparks. That sounds like a world ministry. So there, before there this go. guy even starts, he was the he was anointed, like, anointed to do this. Okay. He's yeah, got my good. ears. All right, let's keep going here. So many of our friends, whether it's Lana Vosser, Chuck yes. Pierce, or Tim Sheets, have been talking about we're not just entering into a new season. It's a whole new era. And I say that because, listen, I'm so grateful for what God has done through the church in previous decades, in previous seasons. I'm very grateful. However, and there's no nice way to say this, and I don't say it with a judgmental or legalistic finger pointed at anyone specifically. If anybody, I'll point the finger at myself. When the Lord spoke to my spirit with real thundering sobriety, the show is over. I'm like, well, what does that mean? And I'm thinking. Yeah, I'd kind of like to know what that does mean, you know? Well, when God speaks to him in slobbering drunkenness instead of sober, sobering sobriety. I mean, I mean, how does that roll? Thundering sobriety. Uh, yeah, I, I would just, I would just point to you know, tell you. Rodney Howard Brown, the uh, the Holy Ghost bartender, <laughs> the uh, gonna... the Brownsville and and the uh, and the Toronto uh, revivals. Yeah, I'm gonna save so. some sinners. Isn't this is the coolest thing? But when he when he speaks soberly, we're gonna have to do something. The Go. show's over. The, yeah, uh, it's last call. Last call. <laughs> <you know. laughs> right. 
So, all right, let's get going here. Where we're going, I mean, just think of 2020 with COVID, societal unrest, the elections, all of that. I mean, those are just three highlights on a global scale where there was just unrest. There was anxiety. There was worry. There was fear, all of that type of thing. But where we are going, listen, the shaking is not going to stop. Shaking is a prophecy bingo word. A lot of all prophets the, are actually All the unrest and all the garbage that he's talking about. No, nobody, nobody predicted any of it. Nothing. No, not a no, zip. Last year it was all rainbows and unicorns. And now he yeah. presumes to speak authoritatively on anything, which is just right. laughable. That God is going to shake everything out of his people, out of the church that can be shaken. But that is not a necessarily bad thing, because when everything's shaken out, the only thing that will remain is that which is of the kingdom. So when I'm like, God, the show is over, where we're going, we can't afford to be a show. Entertainment-driven Christianity is not going to accomplish what God needs to do in the earth in the days, years, and decades ahead. Yeah, he's singing our song here. <laughs> he's prophesying a revival in Lutheranism. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there are miracles, and then there are miracles. I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, like, like entertainment-driven Christianity is going to fail. I right. Mean, my whole that's, that's my congregation. We right. do the same I, thing I, every I, week. Been, it's Jesus Christ. I've been and praying and preaching for that for decades. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's keep going. God and His sovereignty has used some of that where we elevated the platform and production value and the lights and good music and listen i'm all and the prophetic interpretive dancers you know from the happy hands club right all about being excellent i'm all about being professional but the lord spoke this to my spirit one time he said listen you can have all those things i'm not railing against being of excellence and professional however if we have all of those things but they are the result of a trade in the spirit realm then we've lost everything in other words if we have lots of people big buildings lots of seats so you gotta know he's not making a biblical argument you know for any kind of reforms or anything like that he's he's just well god told me this directly so you know yeah, you better get rid of the praise band, man, you know? All right. High-end New York Times best-selling book deals. If we become celebrity pastor, all that kind of thing. We've got it all, man. We built the kingdom. If we have all of that and yet the whole... We built this kingdom. We built this kingdom on rock and roll. Anyway. <laughs> And the whole Sorry. society collapsed three days later due to lack of anything <laughs> substantive. All right, let's. Uh, now I got to warn you. Uh, here, here's a, a prophecy no. from uh, Reina, and uh, this is Prophet Reina from the Ignite the Fire Ministries. Hey, and, fire! Uh, and uh, she's going to be our our, yeah. our first uh, prophet who's going to overtly. Uh, now I don't even know if it's. You can't even say it's doubling down. This is tripling or quadrupling down on Trump. And this will be the focus of uh, of her prophetic word of the Lord for the month of February. I claim anyway, fire, by the way. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's see where we go here. Hi, everyone. Pastor Reina here with Ignite the Fire Church and Ministries. Welcome, welcome to my channel. How is everyone? How is everyone? Here I am, guys. I have a word of encouragement for you guys. And um, I just wanted to share something that the Lord put in my heart. But before I can get to it, I just want to Thank you all for your subscriptions. I made it to 10,000 subscribers. Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I got, I got so into it. Here. I got, I'm going to dislike the video for that. Okay, we can continue. So I just want to say thank you. I want to thank all of those that wrote to me and um, all of those that left encouraging comments. And uh, a lot of you, I could feel your love and... Uh, just i just want to say that you guys are awesome because you guys they not only encourage me but you encourage one another that's what the body of christ does right we encourage one another i am glad that you guys are are responding that way mainly at this time because a lot of people are down and uh we are here to build each other up right 
right. Okay, so um, I just wanted to, to share something with you that the Lord put in my heart to do. And um, it was maybe a couple of days ago. And the Lord said to me that I needed to come on here and to, um, and, and to, and to sound the trumpet. To, to sound the shofar, to sound the trumpet. I wish you'd actually blow it, because then I could actually use. Well, I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat, because I cheat anyway. <laughs> oh, she mentioned shofar. Look at that, shofar, so good. All right, back to this. <laughs> oh, one thing, one thing. I, uh, Nikki and I, when we were like, when we were listening to the last prophecy bingo, because she hadn't seen it yet. Um, specifically, this woman, she doesn't put the music in in post. She's playing the music on a boombox or something to the side of the camera. So every time there's an edit, the music shifts. Like you oh, know, like yeah. you, you can hear the music; the timing goes completely out of whack. So okay. she's, she's not doing any post production on this. It's like you know, she's and, and, and she does these like really hard cuts too. <laughs> and she's on her edits. Okay, all right. Let's see. Here we go. Keep going. And to say, long live President Trump. And I'm thinking, mm, I don't know, Lord. <laughs> So God told her to say that. Long live President Trump. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Because usually you say that for a king. And so um, I was I was uh, a bit reluctant. I was a bit, um, you know, Lord, I'm going to wait until you confirm this to me. And so just recently. So God confirmed this to her. So not only did God give this to her, God confirmed it too. A rather presumptuous prophet, wouldn't you believe? Somebody who was like, you know, if it's a word from God, I just, I don't know about it. I just, <laughs> I'm not going to say now, now, George, you have that look on your face. Like, you know, you're, you, 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 you're going to say something. You almost look like you're been no, punched in the no, face. There's no words. There's no words. <laughs> well, because I, I just keep thinking, I mean, this is what, the fourth one or the fifth one? All these uh-huh. people and best construction, they really believe that God is speaking to them. Oh yeah, that's the best they, construction. They some really, of them really believe. Do. Yep. Um, I'm in the wrong business, man. All I got to do is add one little sentence in front. God told me that you should pay me more. Uh, that's what yeah. I'm going to tell my church on Sunday. God told me that you should pay me more. Yeah, uh, I mean they, it's a, it's a great I think racket. You're going to be finding another call after that, so you know. Uh, you know, uh, but I mean, but it'll work. It'll work for fifteen thousand views. It'll. Yeah. It, it'll. I mean it. it and it, I mean, it'll work all the way for about 70 years until I go to hell. But I mean, other than that, it seems like a really good shtick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but they all believe that God is speaking to him and it's all highly emotional. It's all inside. And then God told her to do something that she thought was whack. And so she says, I'm going to need a confirmation of that. Well, the same spirit that said it is just going to say it again. I mean, that's not testing the spirit. How do you? Th- right. So, so my and, and repetition. Is, yeah. I, and so I believe a spirit is behind this. It's just not the Holy Spirit. So, all right, let's keep going Recently, here. I was listening to someone and they talked about Adonai. I don't know if any of you have heard the story of Adonai on First Kings 1. Uh-huh. And uh, so I... One of the sons of David who uh, tried to, to uh, sneak himself into the throne before Saul. Decided to dig a little bit deeper into this word, into this reading. And... Um, my goodness, my goodness, if I was waiting for confirmation, that was it, you all. <laughs> that was the confirmation I needed. So her confirmation is her misreading of the story from that text from First Kings. Okay. <laughs> so um, I am going to share a little bit of what the Lord put in my heart to do. And um, now I also want to share with you guys a dream that I had that the Lord gave me, which goes kind of hand in hand with this with this word that I was reading. Now, I'm, I'm going to do this not out of disrespect for her because she kind of waxes eloquent here. I'm going to bump the speed up to two times. Okay. Because I, 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 I want to make sure. I'm going right, to hold brace on. Brace yourself. Here we're we going go. Here we're going to hit go. plaid. Have yeah, time to really dig into it. Read it. It's First Kings chapter 1. And basically, it's uh, Adonai. Um, now, he is the son of Haggith. And um, he pronounces himself king as King David's on his deathbed. He... That's uh, an animal sacrifice, and um, it's not his place because he has not been appointed to be king by King David. Listen up, guys. Listen up. No one can self-appoint. No one can self-promote. No one can say, this is the position I want, and think that they're going to remain in it. Because if they appoint... She's uh, referring to Biden at this point. But she can. I mean, she... Yeah, uh, I know. She as can. As a prophetess. As uh-huh. a prophetess. Right. ...themselves, then it's not legitimate. 
It's like you or myself. I cannot just go into stuff in a police officer's outf outfit and think that I'm going to be arresting people left, right, and center and, you know, going to start shooting people with my water gun. I have no authority. You would have no authority. Uh, the authority and the power comes by being appointed and not only by men, but being appointed by men and God. <laughs> Are you guys getting my drift here? Are you guys getting my drift? Okay. I'd like to see your prophetic credentials with the God signature on it, please. So <laughs> when were you sworn in as a prophet? So I'm going someplace with this story. So he appoints himself, and um, now um, Nathan the prophet comes to Bathsheba and says, Hey, have you heard that Ananias has appointed himself king? He's already done a sacrifice, and he's feasting with all these people. And in fact, he invited a whole bunch of important people and priests and all sorts of people that he wanted to invite. And uh, he sounded some people, Hey, can I be king? And they're like, Okay, you can be king. And so other people appointed him. <laughs> other people said, Yes, you can be king. Um, doesn't that sound familiar, guys? <laughs> doesn't that sound familiar? Or Uh, yeah, this isn't twisting God's word. If God the Holy Spirit were actually talking to her, I think the Holy Spirit would say, you need to stop so, twisting my word. So this is, if I'm understanding, I'm, and this is not in any way, shape, the sun is shining on me. I'm prophetic right now. It's like, oh, right yeah. through the blinds onto me. Right. I mean, yeah. look at me. It's just. Well, we knew that about so, you, that your so, dad thought you were so bright, he called you sun. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks, buddy. Uh, so the. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take that word and it's going to be a gift to me. All right. It's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be new wine and old, uh, old wine and never mind. So, never mind. Um, yeah. So her prophetic word is that Biden isn't actually president and that Trump should be president. And yeah. somehow that's going to get undone. Yeah. And what happens when that doesn't happen? Oh, shifting. God shifting. Yeah, that, God. That, that's a sh See, it, it, well, can Ash explain? That's just God testing. But she's, I understand she's comparing I'm, I'm two learning. completely different systems of government. You don't vote for kings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's that a small is a good problem. line, by the way. Yeah. It's a small problem. Yeah, vote for kings. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's. All right. So um, he had his own cheerleader saying, okay, go, go be king, right? And they're already singing, long live the king. And Nathan comes with this message to, to Bathsheba. And so Nathan, see, it's good to listen to the prophets, you guys. It's very good to listen to the prophets. So Nathan says, here, I'm going to give you this advice. If you don't want to end up becoming a prisoner and losing your head, you and your son, you know. So um, what you are going to do is you're going to go before your husband, King David, and then say to him, didn't you promise that Solomon, your son, was going to sit on the throne? Then she says to him, but Adonijah has made himself king. And, and he's already done the sacrifice, and he's already feasting, you know, he's already throwing a big party, basically. And he has, and of course, he did not invite anybody that was anybody or anyone that would be godly, anyone that would be walking with King Solomon. He did not invite, including the prophet Nathan. So he says, go and talk to the king, right? So she goes and talks to the king. And, and then, of course, Nathan says, when you're talking to the king, I'm going to walk in and I am going to back you up in what you're saying. She goes in and she presents this to, to the king. And then as she's talking to him, then here comes Nathan. Now, when Nathan comes before the king, Nathan says, have you, my lord, the king, declared that Adonijah should be king after you and that he will sit on your throne? Today, he has gone down and sacrificed a great number of cattle, fattened cows and sheep. He has in invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the army and Abiathar, the priest. Right now, they are eating and drinking with him and saying, long live King Adonijah. But me, your servant, Sadok, the priest, and Benaiah, son of Jehoadiah, and your servant Solomon, he did not invite. Now, listen to this. Is this something my lord the king has done without letting his servants know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Isn't that what, isn't that what the prophets are doing right now? They are going before the lord and they're asking, because a lot of them have been thrown into confusion and in, into doubt right now. They have been doubting what they heard at a time of light. They are doubting in the time of darkness, what they heard from God. So now Nathan comes and asks the king, now did I miss something here because... You know, did you appoint him and I just missed, you know, the memo? <laughs> Maybe not appointed him, but I did, I, I did get that tweet, you know, I, somehow I missed it, right? So King David says, I made an oath. And he did make an oath to Bathsheba. He promised Bathsheba that, uh, that, that, um, that Solomon was going to be king. So he says, call Bathsheba, bring her right in. So Bathsheba comes in and he says, I will surely carry out this very day what I swear to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, Solomon, your son, should be king after me and he will sit on my throne in my place. Hallelujah. So you see, there, here's a time where where everybody thought all is lost because, um, you know, this guy's already throwing a party. This guy has already done the sacrifice. This guy has done everything that you need to do to be king. But hey, you can do everything to be king, to play out the role. But without having been appointed, there is no power behind it. Do you understand me? Do you get me on this? Okay, so he has no power behind what he is done because the power comes from being appointed by the king. So then they move on to anoint Solomon. Nathan goes, all the important people go to anoint Solomon. So read it because this is a very, a very good read mainly for this time. It's really going to encourage you. So uh, verse 34 says, there have sat the priest and Nathan, the prophet, anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, long live King Solomon. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I knew that the Lord wanted me to do this. And when I read this, I was like, okay, so you're for real, Lord. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this. So because the king said it, and when he said it, then now the right people move into place to anoint the king. And they sound the trumpet. They blew the trumpet. They blew the shofar. And they declare it. And of course, when people heard this, people just began to follow Solomon. It says here, verse 39, Sadek the priest took the horn of oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon. Then they sounded the trumpet and all the people shouted, long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, 
playing pipes. Now remember, her prophetic word was long live King Trump. Okay, that was her prophetic I gotta word. tell you, she's got huspa. She doubled down on the whole Biden ain't real oh, president I know. thing. I think this I is mean, a tripling down. I at mean, this point. she she is like off the cliff and falling down. And even even my puppy who has a had a Trump collar, he he's accepted the truth that Trump isn't president. So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and you'll note that the, this video was published on January thirtieth. You know, so th- this this is you know, just like a week old at at the at most here. And you it's you- post inauguration. You did a good thing putting it on two times the speed, too. I was yeah, a little yeah. worried, but you're a pro. Yeah. Let, let, was it, did God just, speak just to Just you? a little bit more. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not, not that way. He talks me through his written word constantly when I'm reading, but that's a different thing. And rejoicing greatly so that the ground shook with the sound. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what that sounds like? You know what that sounds like? That sounds like revival to me. So when, when this happens... Listen, I, I just want to share this with you guys. With all of that's going on, and because of whom is sitting right now in presidency in the White House, very strong spirit of Jezebel and witchcraft is being released over the land and over the people. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wicked man. witchcraft. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I know that some people have been feeling tired, have been feeling sick, and have been feeling oppressed and depressed because of what's taking place. But it's not just that. There is a spirit because of the authorities that right now are governing the land. But it's not going to be for long, you guys. It's not going to be forever. It's not going to be forever. How long? I don't know. I'm going to tell you guys the dream that I had. I, in I, I miss that I have glory in the midst of it, but I, I do okay. have glory. So yeah, right. th- there was, th- it was back there a little bit. And yeah, uh, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm going to uh, give that to you. Yep. I, uh, I, 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 it was I, back I, there. I, I let, think let's I, move along here. The aneurysm. Is this Santa again? Santa's uh, back. Okay, so we're heading off to Gloria's Eye. Listen to the name of this prophecy. Stand and listen as the noise around you is silenced. This is the prophecy. I think it's the, this is the sound of one hand clapping prophecy. Here we go. That's cheesy. You started it. That Hang way. on a second here. I'm, get, I'm getting. I'm getting a download. I can feel <laughs> the interpretation coming in now. And you're not going to believe this, but I believe that he was talking about destiny. So okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that doesn't help uh, me. Oh. Destiny, yeah. destiny. 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 Yeah. Destiny. Hey, destiny. I, I want you. No escaping. Not I, for I, me. I want to test me. drive a name for those dancers. Solid gold prophecy bingo dancers. All right, uh, you let's, think that? Let, you know, yeah, right. I, I think we should try that. Yeah, solid gold prophecy bingo <laughs> dancers. Like dan- the guy at the keyboard looks like he's in a hospital gown. That's what I was thinking too. He looks like he's escaped from like the ICU. <laughs> yes, I'm he looking did. for the. Uh, I, I'm l- looking for the IV. You know, and in fact, I, I think that's an IV line running right there. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> on his neck. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yelling. Yeah, that counts. Yelling, yeah. Yelling and gibberish. Okay, yeah. here. here comes Santa Claus. And I say to you, most of the time, I am yelling from heaven, advance my people. Advance my people. <laughs> But I say to you, this will be a week ahead where you stand in the midst of the clamor. I say this will be a time of standing and listening carefully for the noise around you. I want you to hear as it becomes silenced in days ahead. And I say to you, I am putting spectacles and even eyes in the back of your head. Many- <laughs> oh, good. I could finally compete with my wife. She always had eyes in the back of her head. Anyway. <laughs> and again, nothing concerning nothing. the suffering, death, and resurrection of the reason why we believe what we believe. Uh-huh. And yeah. the, all of it, is it presupposed? Is it assumed? Is I, it, I just think it's it's in the rearview mirror. It, they left Jesus in the dust. So they view they, they view that the gospel is this 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 like milk, and this yeah. is the meat. 
Yes. Because this is whack. I mean, mm -hmm. well, I'm I just upset he won't say any of my words. I'm yeah. mad at Santa right now, and I'm cutting <laughs> off my... <laughs> Unless he's All right. uh, he's going to say one of my words or else I'm done with him. Okay. If you are looking forward, but I say watch what I do with what you have come through. I say I am capable of doing things not in time, so time realigns. So I say watch and watch carefully as you advance for this will be a week of watching noise be quietened. Is that a word, quietened? Did, did the Holy Spirit just give us a new word, quietened? <laughs> Prophesy, I will. Understand you won't. English, I don't speak. I mean, right. what? Better if it, I mean, it's might as well just get... prophetic Jar Jar Binks up there. Yeah. Timing, I right. suppose timing doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ugh. my apologies in advance. You have to prepare yourself for the fashion travesty that is uh, Robin Bullock. Here we go. Robin, um, you have, uh, God said... <laughs> to you something about an invasion from heaven that's coming. Yes. You want to yes. talk about that? I, I'm sure. MacGyver called. He wants his mullet back. So, yeah. <laughs> no, why I does it? Why is it? silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> got is a there moose. A, got a moose. Can I have to look this up. Is there, a, is there a market for mullet toupees? I just have to I, I have no idea. I didn't know that they made those until just now. <laughs> so... I think they sell them over at uh, Walmart in the women's uh, wig aisle, but that's a different story. But yeah, well, no, there Pointed. exists. There's an entire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he's bringing us the word of the Lord. You show some respect here. He's a prophet, man. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to try to to say this as fast as I can. Okay, you're all fine. You're fine. And, and um, there is there is going to be. See, there is a, um, the, in the story of the Good Samaritan, there, no. it actually tells the history of the whole of mankind from the fall all the way really? to right now. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and where it says, uh, you know, when the certain lawyer came to Jesus and said, uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, uh, you know, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Law. And he said, but the Holy Ghost told on the lawyer, the doctor of the law. because <laughs> What translation is he reading? He said, but he willing to justify himself said, who is my neighbor? So the man wanted to know, why can't I make myself right? Why does it take you to make me right? How come I can't do it myself? So he, he, some kind of something to do with the gospel. Because they question Jesus as the Messiah. So here Jesus starts telling a story that is not a parable. Because he starts it out saying there was a certain man. Now this is certain this man existed. And he traveled from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Well, when you study, you find out that Israel is the garden spot. Jerusalem, we know now, is where Adam lived. That was his place. That was his. So apparently, Adam had an apartment in Jerusalem. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no. I wish I could come up with something funny on that. Yeah, I, just... I will say this: is that uh, you know, I think about our good friend uh, uh, Pastor Buto. Uh, he 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 would argue that uh, you know that the Garden of Eden probably was. Uh, where, where Christ was crucified, and I, and, I, and I understand where he's going with that. I I, I get that. Yeah, it, it's weird hearing these same concepts being used in this in this manner, though, not pointing us to Christ. I'm going to call so. him and tell him that you've made reference to him. He'll immediately repent of that because of this. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll totally give up the allegory because of yeah, this no, guy. It, because yeah. Wayne's World is saying that yeah, that's JC right. had an Adam had an apartment yeah. in yeah. in yeah. in Party Jerusalem. Party on, 
Excellent. Woo. Anyway. His home. But this certain man left Jerusalem, headed down a road called the Bloody Way to Jericho. And on the way down there, Jesus said he fell among thieves. But the Greek says he lighted among them. In other words, he joined them. He committed treason. And he joined these thieves. And it said they stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and left him half dead. Well, Adam wore three garments. He wore the garment of praise. He had the robe of righteousness. And he what? <laughs> I thought Adam and Eve were wandering around naked. You know, I, I, mean, I this is like a train taking a dirt road. It's like <laughs> it, I, yeah. it's it's so off the rails. I it's just wow. What is going on? Yeah, I, I don't know. What to and make he had of the this tunic here. of authority that he wore. And so the enemy wanted those clothing. Notice in that story. <laughs> he didn't have any clothes. <laughs> and that Adam was the problem. Eve, right. <laughs> they covered themselves up, man. You know, after they, with fig leaves after they sinned. You know. <sighs> they didn't take his money. They took his clothes. They wanted his clothes. And so when they took his clothes from him, they wounded him, left him half dead. Now Adam didn't just know good. He knew good and evil. He was half dead. And so he's laying there, and Jesus says this. He says, and there came a certain priest that way. And the priest saw him and passed by on the other side. But one of the Greek words says he went the opposite. In other words, the priesthood couldn't save the man. Then he said there was a Levite came by. He couldn't save. So the Levitical law couldn't save the man. The priesthood couldn't save the man. Remember, Jesus is answering, why can't I make myself right? He said. All right. There's there's no translation. (laughs) I know. Of Perry Pipto that has him like becoming Robin Hood. There's just. There's yeah, just I know. None. I, I'm sorry. I had to check it out because I was just in awe. And now yeah, this, I, this is a mess. This he, is a it, train wreck. He's not really reading the text and exegeting it here. I, uh, there's details in this story that I had never heard before, so, you know? So, like, this is, this is what happens. Um, sometimes folks will say, doesn't the Bible say that somewhere? You know what I mean? This is the same sort of uh, haphazard summary of something. Usually it's something, doesn't the Bible say somewhere that God helps those who help themselves? Like, no, nowhere Mm. does it say that. In fact, he helps the ungodly. This, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the, uh, that's the Ben Franklin, uh, poor Richard's almanac, uh, Bible. So, yeah. All right. Let's, are we, are we done with this guy? Cause, but but, 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 you know what, what is interesting, the guy, it, it, what, what is so great about the good Samaritan is that there's so many different ways in which you can find the gospel in it. Oh, because I know. Jesus could, cause yeah. It's cause like Jesus could be the guy in the ditch who fell amongst the thieves. And I mean, the, yeah. and, and well, that's the clergy. I mean, I mean, they pass on the side and all that jazz or, or if you need that word of God, he could be the, he could be the guy, you know, he could be the guy who passed the Samaritan who picks you up out of the ditch either. I mean, ugh, all that good. And this has just been train yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, Hank Kuhneman is our next uh, up for oh, Prophecy Bingo. Oh, oh, no. And I apologize, but, you know, all the prophecies this month seem, you know, in one way or another, you know, to be connected to Trump. Kuhneman has spectacularly falsely prophesied that Trump would be reelected. And, uh, and as of when this was published, February 2nd, he uh, has still uh, said that he has not conceded. And that Kuhneman is uh, is standing by the words that he received from God. So let's. Uh, is let's he going to back down? Is he is he giving up? Is he still sticking by that prophecy? So Pastor Hank, I'll give it to you. Where are you at? Hey, thank you for uh, the the advertising of, of where I might be. So I want to begin to say I am standing, really more stronger and firm than any other time that I've prophesied. And no, I'm not caving in. 
And this isn't an arrogant statement. That's not what this is about. This is a statement that I am standing with what the Lord has said. More prophecies are coming to pass. A lot of things are still yet to play out. And here's the thing we have to remember. It wasn't just this vessel that prophesied or declared or heard or saw something concerning what's taking place in our nation that we're still standing for. There was too many people that felt the same thing. So it isn't, isn't just one person. So I stand by the fact that God didn't just speak to me. He spoke to multitudes of people. But you know what? I want to just do this, Gene. You know, yeah, I mean, all those prophets of all couldn't have possibly been wrong on Mount Carmel. You know, there was a whole multitude of them. There was only one real prophet there. Yeah. <clears throat> you mentioned in your opening monologue about, you know, evangelists need to evangelize and, and so forth. But prophets need to continue to prophesy. That's right. Because what we're experiencing also is what caused one of the greatest prophets in all of history to cave in talking about Elijah, was a demonic spirit of Jezebel that drove him into a cave. And we have to be careful that we aren't aligning ourselves with the demand of these evil forces, these evil spirits, once again, speaking into a culture, speaking into a generation, speaking in and demanding that certain prophetic vessels uh, meet their demands. Uh, you know, like... Uh that they repent of their false prophecy that Trump would be reelected, you know. So what happens now that it hasn't happened? Has everybody left Hank's church? I mean, am I going to find? No, no, they're, all, the they're, all, they're all standing by him, man. He, 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 he had a prophecy, a whole, a whole two hour long prophecy uh, service at his uh, church just the other day. Okay. <laughs> something about, yeah. is about to bust, dude, right? Yeah, something I, I, is about to bust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, yeah. His, his prophetic credibility is what yeah, that yeah. was last month. So, And if right. we're not careful, we'll steer away from thus saith the Lord and become prophets of the land. Now, that doesn't mean that prophets aren't accountable. This prophet's accountable. It just means we have to, when we believe that we've heard from God and we know that we've heard from God, we must stay loyal to what we've heard. And I want to say this last thing. You know, today is Groundhog Day. Here's why I'm not caving in. Groundhog Day. You know what? The groundhog saw his shadow. But there's... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, not another so. Groundhog Day, and it's happening in Washington, D.C., and they are going to see their shadows, too, because there is a great light of exposure that is going to show the darkness that they have been part Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the prophetic Groundhog Day is coming when the politicians in Washington are going to see their shadows. Part of and show and reveal the darkness that they are carrying out. And I guarantee you, we may have a few more weeks of winter. Uh, the truth is, you can yeah, so they're, stop they're and just the there's, so, uh, there's. Yeah. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, mm -hmm. is built on the groundhog and his excellent <laughs> shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give you two two points for effort on that one. So yeah, <laughs> there's no effort there. I mean, yeah, okay, the certainty yeah. of faith is in the whether the groundhog saw his shadow. Yeah. Uh huh. Which is, by the way, the, this is the equivalent of uh, the reading of omens. You know, which yeah, we, funny we, enough, we've, we've steered off into weird, just weirdo land. You know, not in, he won't made. say any of my words either. <laughs> If he's going to talk like this, he needs to say my words. I need breath. I need All victory. Right. I, I would, I would, I would argue that trying to exegete the Groundhog Day reading or whatever is still more substantive than a majority of their garbage because at least, yeah, there's a, a fifty fifty years. I don't know. It's it's complete garbage, but it's still it's like, like I got to reach into something into reality and like read yeah. omens. Woo! All this right. is this is this is the reason why I, I have people from my church that uh, have watched your show. Chris. Um, oh, my apologies. No, 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 no. They've been brought to Lutheranism by it and by okay. the faithful Christianity by it. Because if this is what you're listening to and you're like, I don't know, I know this isn't right, but I don't know. And they Why? seem so sincere. Yeah. Um, but no mention of Christ, no mention of Christ and him crucified. J Jesus doesn't care about saving anyone. He cares who's in the White House. Yeah. In the year of our <laughs> Lord, 
Two twenty one. That's that's what he's really worried about. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what God cares about. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm so I'm so lost. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, we're heading back, Glory of Zion. Maybe you'll get some uh, words th- on this round. I am healing trauma and diseases of the mind is the name of this prophecy. Here is a I want to hate him, but it, open is right it now. Santa? In the particular nation, nation, in nature of what God wants to heal is diseases of the mind. You know, he came so that we would be healed from diseases schizophrenia those that have suffered with it the lord says i want to come and touch it right now flag on the play says- flag okay i'm not i'm just if if they're praying for healing of of diseases of the mind if that if god did that this church would not exist yeah probably yeah you're not that's wrong how, they're praying for that's, their own that's destruction. why you own your own basement buddy yeah. you got it <laughs> You are sharp as a tack. He didn't even have to buy it off of his mother, but uh, let's Apple keep going Apple doesn't here. fall far from the tree. There you go. Because you're going to come right. into balance in your mind, that perverted way of thinking, and that that separation that's taken place in your mind. He says, I'm bringing it back into balance and order. He says there are manic depressed people, especially in this time. It has caused a bloodline issue to arise. He says, I'm coming to heal your bloodline and set your minds free. He says, this is the hour that I am going to begin to balance the elements of your mind, the chemical balances in your mind, where they have gone astray and where they have been in a place that I did not destine it. I'm coming to bring the elements back into your mind. Yeah, that's that's prophetic yelling right there. So you can begin to think with the mind that I gave you. You're going to begin to act with the very Solid gold, prophetic gold. Who I am! You and he it. says... New from k <laughs> It's solid gold. Prophetic dancers. Anyway. I'm going to begin to separate your mind from the world and set you in a place where you begin to see who I am high and lift it up. So no, I am beginning to heal. The- Stop yelling at me, lady! I'm gonna separate oh, your mind. <laughs> He's a son of mine. He says paranoia is nothing for me. He says watch me begin to move on those areas of your brain. Along with that, I see the Lord dealing with um, mental issues that have been caused by trauma, and particularly in, in trauma where one side or the other just sort of takes over. What about prophecy bingo trauma? You know, I, I'm I may be suffering from that here. You might be, you 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 might be eligible for compensation. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's head over to Kevin Bridges. The See, uh, prophetic I, I would, word. I would lose faith that we were going to actually get a bingo, except I've seen somebody rattle off like six words in a sentence. Th- that does happen. Yeah. It does happen. Gun prophecies. So I'm I'm I, I feel don't, like don't it's, despair. It's don't coming despair. on right now. Don't despair. You're, you're in the you're wrong place on. if you don't want to despair. Yeah. <laughs> you are in the pit of despair. <laughs> like, anyway. no, prophecy bingo, no! <laughs> As I'm looking to February, I see a picture of someone traveling through a tunnel and emerging on the other side. It's as if there was a mountain which they've traveled underneath, and suddenly they're all the way through, they're on the other side. Suddenly is a prophecy bingo word. I happen to have that one on my card. There we go. Okay. And there is a valley which opens up before them, a place of beauty, a place of peace and serenity. And the Lord says to you, do not be afraid, but know that I am the one who is with you. I will bring things to pass. I will bring you to a place of peace. Watch and see. For the things which seem to be so difficult are passing away as I make a way forward for you, a way which will be clear, a way which will be smooth. Do not look to the former things, but look to that which I'm opening out now. Look to that which I'm doing now, for the new is here, a place of freedom, a place of peace. 
watch and see, for I will open up before you new possibilities. I will open up before you new horizons. Look with the eyes of faith and take possession of that which is yours. Look with the eyes of faith and see that which I am doing now. It is time to rejoice. It is time to give thanks, for the new is here. Okay. I thought I was going to get new theory. wine. I have a, I have he, a theory regarding that, that, last, that last prophecy. I'm sorry, but basically all I'm getting out of it is that he's going through Google Images for pretty images and then creating yeah. words to go along with it. Maybe, maybe I that that you know it, it's it's a it's a form of prophetic image interpretation. <laughs> All right, who here's needs, a newcomer. Who needs tea leaves when you have Google? <laughs> right, uh, Pastor Jay Richardson is a newcomer to a prophecy bingo. Ooh, and, uh, transition. I, I I have some I have some hope here for you. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm just saying. All right. I want to give you here. a prophetic outlook for the month of February. Um, 2021 and the month of February will be a month of transition into greater. I have mm. transition on my card. I have transition on my card too. Ding. Okay. So yeah, this, this, all right. This guy understands how it's done. Here we transition go. Transition into greater. Um, you are in between um, the process and the promise. You are in between um, the place God um, has for you and the place God is taking you. And um, in the month of February, um, you're about to see transition into greater. Um, for many of you, there was a, a, a very heavy um, warfare season that kind of uh, uh, hit you uh, late January. I feel like I'm getting a you know a, a cold reading from Miss Cleo, you know. It, it, <laughs> I feel like you know that you you've been through a warfare season. How, oh, what do you, does that mean anything to you, George? Have you been through a warfare season lately? Yeah, it's going on right now, and I'm in real pain. <laughs> okay, and I, and I and I don't know how to get out of it, but I'm going to transition, and I promise uh, to come out the other side still male. Let's yeah, go. good, good. And there was a warfare season of pressing, if you will, um, pressing in whatever area of that's family, home, relationship. And one of the things that I always say is that pressure comes before promotion. February is a month of transition into greater. What's that? Promotion. What's that? The next season. What season is a prophecy What's bingo that? word? The next level. What's that? Next level is a prophecy bingo phrase. Overflow. In the month of oh, level, overflow. I have, I have level. Okay. In February, yeah. many of you are transitioning out of one job to another job. I hope not. Especially for the people <laughs> working on the, the on the Excel pipeline or whatever. Yeah. Well, I would say, hey, all of you out there, I hope you aren't uh, you know satisfied with your job at the moment because it sounds like you're about to be booted. You're going to get your pink slips. So... That, wealth that's how I and interpreted wealth what he transfer said. Transfer are words uh, of mine. He's okay. so close. Don't fail me. Don't Did he say fail me. Yeah. Uh, he has it. He's talking about wealth. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Let, me, let me back it up. Let's see what he does. You are here. transitioning out of one job to another job, out of one place of living into another place of living. Even some of you, um, out of one ministry into another ministry. And God is setting you up. For something major, so you're going to begin to see this month of February some some things to be. Yeah, God's always it's it's, it's, a, it's a big promotion right, coming so, up. Yeah. So does God ever say this month is going to stink for you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have you ever? I mean, does He ever say you're going to actually diminish? Does He ever say that? I, I these guys diminish is not one of our prophecy bingo words for a reason. So, you know, that's so the like best way the, I can put. the whole when the Son of Man comes, I will I find faith on earth that this business, I mean, word of God stuff. It's mm -hmm. so bad at the end. Will I? Well, you know, if if it wasn't for even the elect might have been been torn away, but not right. no, no promotion. No. None no. of my words. 
<laughs> Say my words. All right, let's keep going here. Intentional about the instructions of your leader, the instructions of your pastor, the instructions of the voice that you submit to. Um, tune your ear to the right frequency. Um, even in your own time of prayer and consecration, God's going to begin to download. Download. Hang on a second here. That's that a word? Breath. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's on my card there, dude. That's, my that's, only hope is like, that somebody is going to talk that, in tongues. That is standard <laughs> prophetic fear. Tune your, um, tune your ear to the proper frequency. Old men with yeah. hearing aids. Are, <laughs> yeah, now I got to admit that you know Jay Richardson here, he, so, he's, he's delivering. He's doing a pretty good job, whereas the so, other prophets are stuck on Trump. So, again, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to beat this drum again because that's – you know me. You knew what you were getting. Yeah. Uh, so we, 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 we finding what God says is as random as turning a radio dial. Yes. I mean, it's not in the external word of the gospel. It's not no. in the, the prophetic word, which is able to save your soul. It's no, as that, random you need, you need fresh as, revelation. Fresh. It's got to be hot. It's got to be hot out of the oven. Fresh is one of my words, but it doesn't count when you say it, right? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. Nope. I'm starting. All right, let's keep going here. Particularly in the area of business and entrepreneurship and ministry. Um, you're going to get instructional downloads, if you will, through your prayer and consecration time in those areas. And what was hindering you? What was held up? Um, even for the last three years, in some cases. The month of February is the month of transition into greater. And here are some reasons why your heart is ready now. Your spirit is ready now. Your mind, if you will, is focused now. You've had time to outgrow some seasons. You've had time to outgrow some things. Uh, so I'm so glad he thinks so highly of me. I, I'm going to come back. I might come back to this guy if I need to. All right, let's head back I, I, I gotta to tell uh, you. Notice again that if your life, it, 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 if you are a, a, a poor, wretched sinner, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to go on after that. What he's just yeah. said is that February is going to be a great month for everybody but you because your heart's not in the right place. Yeah. I mean, that's his out. But for if you're an actual human being who has sin, oy vey, rabbi, I mean, yeah. All right, let's go. I, I, are we, oh, it's Santa! Stay in my timing and do not shudder. Here, here, here we go. Here we go. Pasha tai kobo sombaj, hia mata kai shata sa, hoba shata kai sitia shata. All right, I got to translate this. <clears throat> you guys are gonna hate me. <laughs> you to give yourself bingo right now. Yeah, uh, you are. yeah. I, I'm I'm uh, gonna go for I'm gonna go for it. That uh, you know. Uh, let's yeah. see here. I'm I'm feeling a harvest there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we it, can't, it, it, it may require two bingos. But this does require me to uh, <clears throat> to uh, to give a, a prophecy now. So I, I've got to channel my my inner heretic. <clears throat> Yes, I, 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 I've got it now. Oh, it's it's coming in. I feel the Lord is speaking in in my heart right now. I'm receiving a prophetic download. Oh, right now, Jesus is uh, is dispensing a uh, dispensation of destinies right now and is going to be handing out a harvest anointing by mm. which you can reach your potential and purpose. How, how's that? <laughs> Not as much charisma as prophetic Santa, but I'll allow it. Yeah, all right, all right. I just, that's what happens when they speak in tongues. Let's keep going here. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I, I want to know. I want to know what that dance is over here in the. Uh, Those are the Holy Spirit flag girls. Uh, well, mean, they're doing some kind of stick thing here. You know, we got to figure this out. Hang on. Mia shata kai pasa shata kapasata kapasa. It sounds like the language of Mordor to me, but uh, <laughs> just. <laughs> And I say to you, do not shudder in fear. Do not shudder or shake. I say, look through the window that I'm giving you. For even though a troop is amassed, I say, I am giving you strategies and lighting a fire. Strategy is a prophecy bingo within word. Within you that will cause you to go through a troop and end up. Beginning to take 
what the enemy has secured against you. I say stay in my timing. Stay in my timing and do not shudder for I will tell you now I already have a strategy for your victory. Victory. There it is. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for that word. I need a, a judge's question. Birthing and yes, begotting, yes. begetting. Can I? Can I? Birthing and begetting. That seems like close to me. <laughs> I mean, I've got birthing. He got begetting, and that that so, involves so he the said same begetting? action. No, he, he said, said yeah, begetting. He said begetting. All yes. right, I'll give it to you then. I'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, for, this, man. for this, for this and start, I will give you, I will give you birthing because it is a beginning. You're right; it is the same concept. So, all right, all right let's. Uh, here, here's a new uh, newcomer, Gina Hannah Hannah Rahan. I I may have mispronounced her name. Any prophecy but, that comes from your kitchen must be heard. Right. So, all right, let's uh, let's check this one out. And so, friends, I was so excited because. We have been going through it. There is a group of us that have been going through it. And it has felt as if we've been forgotten or passed by. But here we see that the Lord is very well aware. And we're entering into a new month, which is a new season for those who have waited on the Lord. Amen. What I inter interpreted in this one verse is for those who have felt that the Lord has been absent or that you have been passed by. Or for those who have been waiting on the justice of the Lord, do not lose hope because he has not forgotten you. He has not overlooked you. He hasn't been distant. And if you have felt that he has been in the month of February, that's going to stop because now he's going to show you and give you strength to hope in him. Amen. In the month of February, you will be experiencing everlasting kindness and his mercy and you will be strengthened to keep waiting on him for that justice that you have been crying out for i would note this if you're attending a church where the pastor preaches the gospel every sunday uh you always regardless of whether it's january february march april or may or june july or the rest of them you're always experiencing god's grace and his mercy you know, I'm just saying, you know, that, that's, you know. That well, the blasphemy that... is that all of this good stuff is going to occur apart from the suffering and death of Jesus. Right. So God's going right. to give you kindness. He's going to give you more. He's going to, he's going to, but it, it, it it's all reliant on you and it's right. not reliant it, on him. And therefore yep. this is but just it's, painful. But we're only going to have experience this mercy stuff like for the month of February. And that's like the shortest month of the year. I mean, I, I would kind of like. Have to challenge God. Why? Why am I only getting mercy for the you know the short month of the year? Why? Why can't I get it for like one of the longer ones? You are very, you know? very, very bad, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, very bad. Yeah, all right, birdie num nums. All right, let's keep going. Because it is coming, my friends. So if, if this is you and you have felt this way and you're waiting on Him, right underneath, Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Let him see that you still are waiting for him, that no matter what has come at you. And I think Borkhart got raptured. Oh, there, there he is. He came back. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I was down for the count there a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I thought for sure that, you know, that, you, you know, I've been left behind. I mean, you just utterly disappeared there for a second. I thought that was maybe sorry, your clothes please. that were left. Uh, I'm sorry. The green screen's still here. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, we're, we're good. And okay. how tired you may feel or forgotten you still believe in him amen moving on to verse 28 and mm, okay let me you know let, i don't know if i'll slot oh, okay i gotta we, we gotta explain oh, this one no. okay so here's larry sparks larry sparks is interviewing robert henderson <laughs> robert henderson here is going to give us his explanation as to why the trump prophecies didn't come to pass and we're going to learn also that he, since you know, since the election, has been filing lawsuits in the courts of heaven. No, Get yeah, I'm out. not making that up. No, no. I, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to hit play now. I'm ready. Let's go. All right, here, here, here we <laughs> go. You know, before I share the, the the word, I actually have a couple of things I wanted to share, but but uh, I wanted just to say to everybody that's watching, one of the reasons the prophetic having an understanding. Anytime, but especially at the beginning of the new year uh, of what the prophetic 
word words are for us is because in Daniel 7 verse 10 the scripture says the court was seated of course I teach on the court of heaven and totally taking that text out of context wow the books were open were those books among other things, what they what it, what is contained in those books is prophetic understanding, prophetic destiny. He knows what's inside those he, books from Daniel. He said, he said uh, did he say heavenly courts or did he say heaven court, the courts of heaven? Because he, I have I, heaven, I have heavenly. It, he's, I, I think it was courts of heaven. Mm, courts so. of heaven. Yeah. yeah. Courts of heaven. Uh, prophetic You're input. That's me. what's in the yeah. book. So what we do, the reason the books are open when the court is seated and ready to hear cases. I'm pretty sure the court, the books are opened on the day of judgment. Isn't that how that works, George? Am I, I mean, maybe I missed that day in seminary, you know, where we talked about, you know, the prophetic things inside those books okay, and stuff. You're living in a universe where God's word actually matters. I mean, we're just, we've left that universe for this, this, this guy, this okay. guy. That's a good fair I'm point. Trying, fair I'm point. trying to think of what star he looks like. Um, <laughs> I, I just can't get it there. I'm like Malcolm yeah. McDowell, maybe. Yeah. Meets I, I don't know. A yeah. little bit yeah. crazy. He had a bad day. Go ahead. Yeah. Very, a very ragged Rutger Hauer. Yeah. It, because <laughs> what we're to present in the courts has to come out of the prophetic. So what we do, just like everything James has shared and Patricia shared and, and others are sharing, what we do is we take the prophetic word and we present it as a case in the courts of heaven. And we ask for God to render rulings on the basis of his word that he has spoken, that we now, as his people who have jurisdiction in the earth realm and in the spirit realm, but we have jurisdiction, that we are presenting that word and asking for, for verdicts to be rendered. And so so that's why we have to have a really good understanding of what... My question is, is you know, where do you buy an attorney for these types of lawsuits, you know? At a crossroads, and, and you need to sell your soul. Right, and then, of course, you always have to deal with the issue of, you know, <laughs> Have you filed the right legal paperwork correctly, uh, you know, in the right jurisdiction, you know, all this kind of stuff? It's like, it's like, if the word don't fit, God must acquit. You know what I mean? It's, like, oh, it's just an absolute. And, and, and what, what is so comical about this is you're the only way out for these guys. And I'm not, I, I, look, again, you know me, I, I, I mean, I do a Bible study every day on Romans. I, I just read yeah. the text. And like the only way out for these guys is not we got it wrong. It's God, you were wrong. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's gonna get worse than that. Hang on a second here. Just hold on. The the, the blame shifting. Uh, you, I think even you will be shocked by what this. God is prophetically okay, saying because that's the way. One of the main ways I've discovered that we actually present cases in the courts of heaven. And, 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 of course, Daniel, when he understood by the number of the books in, in Daniel chapter 9 that the end of the 70 years of captivity was coming to a close, well, what did he do? He took that prophetic understanding and he began to petition God. He began to repent. He began to do everything that needed to be done so that legally God could now fulfill the word that he had spoken through Jeremiah 70. Wait, 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 wait. God, you, you, Daniel did something in order for God to be able to legally begin to fulfill his word. Otherwise, if Daniel hadn't done it, God it. would have been illegal in the fulfillment of his word. Man, this makes your. I'd like, like to help you, but I'm not allowed to because of laws that are beyond my control. Right, yeah. <laughs> it would be illegal for me to fulfill my word until you did your part. But you're God. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything because I'm, <laughs> I'm held captive by. <laughs> This yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the Holy Spirit. Is right now it's illegal for me to fulfill my word. Could you please uh, file one of them handy dandy prophetic lawsuits so that I can finally have the legal right to fulfill my word? Yeah. I have the merits, but not the standing. <laughs> okay, so weird. Eighty is that forty or eighty two? Yeah, forty two thousand. Forty two thousand. Forty-two thousand. I'm in the wrong. bit. My business plan is there, so There is flawed. no money to be made in orthodoxy. And sounds. <laughs> I just my, say it. I mean, I continue to just preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And I know. what I should be saying is, what you would be saved if you would go and petition God. 
right. for him yeah. to like change his decree. Oh that, yeah, you know, you'd, you'd get a million subscribers in no time, man. So let's keep going years here. previously, but he didn't just fold his arms and hope it was going to happen. He actually understood. I have got to pray this word into reality. And so so that's why we have to be really, really good stewards uh, of the word of the Lord. And of course, first Timothy 118, Paul said to Timothy that he should wage a good warfare according to the words of the prophetic words that had gone forth on him. He should, in other words, he understood. He said, Timothy, you need to understand you've got to contend for these words to become a reality. That's that's why sometimes people get words and they say, well, it didn't happen. Well, did you war did you war for it? Did you contend for it? Did you did you engage in it or did you just clo- fold your arms and act like it was going to happen by accident or by some magical means? Because so in other words, his he, he was one of these fellows who prophesied Trump, and uh, it didn't come to pass. And so it's your fault because you didn't pray into it. You didn't make it happen. You didn't warfare for it. They, they have no wine. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So take some jars and, and take, it to the, take it to the master of the feast. It's still yeah. water. Well, you didn't warfare for it. You just mm-hmm. didn't, you didn't warfare <laughs> for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. oh my gosh! And again, the suffering yeah. and death of Jesus doesn't matter. I mean, that right. doesn't matter. He's not, he's not a false prophet. You're just lazy because you didn't warfare for his prophetic well, word that Trump would be president. Re- remember, remember, Trump was their guy. He was the guy that they all would, you know, they would. Trump would let him in the White House, talk to him like, "We have power," and now that Trump is out there, like. Oh no, we don't have power. Oh no. Yeah, let's keep going here. That, <laughs> that I always tell people that's an impersonation. Prophetic mm-hmm. that's an actually impressive is, impersonation. is God <laughs> granting us a prayer agenda so that we can pray into reality that which He has spoken. So I wanted just to share uh, that idea before I share the words that I feel like God's spoken. Yeah, so you want to make sure, the, the, you want to make this clear. The reason why Trump isn't president is your fault because you didn't warfare for it. And now he's going to give us another word of the Lord. And, you know, so he's the one who prophesied falsely that Trump would be reelected. That didn't happen. It's your fault. You didn't warfare for it. And now he has another word from God for us. And the, now the so, question is, are, are you going to warfare for it, George, or not? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to answer that. But my, my, my question to you is, is I mean, because you know that you know these guys, they 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 love and hate you at the same mm-hmm. time. Um, does I mean when they get their little Facebook group in which they're like discussing how their stuff didn't work? I mean, is this the is this what they come up with, or does he actually believe that this is what? Oh, this is what he comes up I with. Mean, it's your fault. This is legitimately I mean, what they come up with. All right, yeah. I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I, I've been rebuked for acknowledging that uh, Biden has become the president of the United States and for not warfaring for Trump to be uh, put back into office. But n- don't don't worry. Don't worry. God's timing is not tied to so, uh, inaugurations and things. If he if he if he does get elected sometime down the line, is he the beast that got the mortal wound that raised from? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. No, no. Never mind. <laughs> He yeah, can't no, be the beast yeah. because he's an American. Well, we you, you understand that if that was true, then that that makes Paula White the uh, the uh, the whore of Babylon. So, but that's a different story altogether. Not a problem. I'm with okay that. with this. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't Not even know who this. that is, and I'm okay yeah. with it. Cause yeah. Okay. Who knows All what right. next <laughs> is going to come? So. Okay. <laughs> no. Let's keep going. Um, you know, I, as as I was just meditating before we came on tonight, uh, I remembered. My wife and I, Mary, we were in Australia in 2019 uh, at, toward the tail end. And I had a very significant dream. I never said a whole lot about it because I didn't like it. And But in this dream, we were being bombed. I mean, not just, I mean, society was being bombed. Literally, planes were flying over and they were releasing bombs. And I remember seeing the bombs. Release is a prophecy bingo word. As they word. would come out of the planes, they would float, and 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 I would, and some of them would go over our heads, and they would hit the ground, and they would explode. And I told Mary, I said, "We're going to have some bombs." I said, "I said some shocking things, some things that are going to happen." And I didn't know what that was, but I look back on that on that, and I think, <laughs> "What?" Little did he know it was his all, prophecy that was going to bomb. All of his prophecies bombed. 
Oh, I like what you did that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there's going to be some bombs. Yeah, your, your prophecies went bust. That's right. Okay. Oh, man, 2020. Plus my ministry down the toilet. It's yeah. been a Every year second. of bombs. And <laughs> Every time he says it now, I can't hear it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, you know, we're coming to an end now, but the bottom of 2020, but, but just, you know, bomb after bomb after bomb of things that has, that has dropped in this year that none of us would have ever imagined, you know, right. Or predicted, yeah. Or predicted Who predicted? Or predicted? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's That's right, I, I like your interpretation, Josh. I really do. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> the Lord is working out our timing this week. Oh, I'm glad it's this week. Okay, if here we go. If anyone's going to take me to the promised land of bingo, it's going to be Santa. All right, we, we're, we're, we're pulling for Santa Claus here. He's working our timing out. I got timing. If Are you kidding? I got timing. Oh, don't you fail me now, Santa. <laughs> All right. Ever oh, no. there's a week where he's working our timing out. It's this week. Now, hear what I'm saying. You don't have to like a prophetic word. You don't have to listen to it. This week, he's working timing out. So be cautious as you move and let him show you the path that will bring you to your next level of prosperity. That will Next level prosperity Wait. is on there. Hang on a second this, here. He said that you don't I, have I, to listen to this prophetic word. Yeah. So how much how much um, credence or is he giving you know the word of the Lord that he supposedly hears? It's like nah, you don't have to listen. It's just the word of God, but who cares? It's yeah, yeah, fine. yeah. All right, so I I got a, I got another uh, word by the way. So, word right. as far as personally. Corporately, territorially, nationally, and generationally. Now, Father, we thank you that we are stilling our emotions so we can walk. You know, I, if, I, I, you know, I keep pointing this out, if, if God is really speaking through Chuck Pierce, the the universe is doomed, just doomed, because God has lost his mind. New newcomer here. This is Missy Sue Gordon. Missy Sue Gordon. Let's see what she has to say. Here. Hey guys, it's Missy Gordon here, and I just wanted to share something with you that that God was showing me, and I know that this is for some people who will be watching this video. So I am talking to you. So there I was, just randomly clicking on YouTube videos and come across Missy Sue Gordon. God's talking to me. What's he got to say? God spoke <laughs> to me while... She's it's a, a plant! <laughs> it's a plant. I was watching a TV show of all things. Give me the plant. And they were taking a palm tree from California and they were planting it in Nevada. And the guy was explaining that if the root ball gets damaged um, it can put the tree into shock and then the tree will die and the Lord spoke to me and he said see how they are taking that tree from one state to another and replanting it he said in that same way I'm doing that for others right now Oh, I hope God's going to be careful with our root balls. And he said to me, but I'm very careful. I'm very careful how I do my work so that I don't hurt anybody. I am a loving father, and I choose how I'm going to move you from one place to another. And my plans for you are good, never to harm you, never for evil, never to teach you a lesson I believe that he's saying, I can do that in other ways. I don't have to harm you and hurt you to teach you a lesson. I can show you things through my perspective. I see that. I see that uh, That timeout. Yes. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Yeah. St. Paul. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I know. 
<laughs> yes, that's, give him a big that's hug the call of Paul. You know, he he's he's going to drag him out of Pharisaical Judaism into Christianity, me, and I'm going to show him all that he must suffer for my name. Yeah, let me hug on your root balls a little bit. I'm going to make it. I'm going to you know I'm just going to love you, and I'm not going to hurt you at all, and it's yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. Okay, next, uh, Jeremiah Johnson. All right, this is a fellow who not only falsely prophesied that Trump would be uh, reelected, he apologized for falsely hearing God. And on January 27th, so, uh, you know, that's not that long ago, he full on gave another prophetic word. Does this, I mean, do, don't you think that if somebody falsely prophesied, uh, apologized for it, and said they're going to be accountable, that, uh, there's no reason that we should ever believe them again. Yeah, I'm just saying. So this is this is a fresh Jeremiah Johnson prophecy, on the, fresh on the heels of his apology for wrongly prophesying again, Trump's if re-election. If you say fresh, I don't get credit for it. No. But. <laughs> nope. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> Keep going. Let's look more closely now about the mountains in our lives that God wants to come and level. And this is where we're not looking at people out there. I believe we're here this morning because God wants us to focus on looking at ourselves in the mirror. Not your spouse, not something in the nation, not someone in your family. Lord, how do I get prepared for what you want to pour out this year? I believe that this is a message for personal preparation. I believe God wants to position you to... Position is a prophecy. Inherit what he's... Inherit. Hang on a second here. Inheritance. I will grant grant that to myself because it's the same thing. House always wins. Always, always, always. Sure, yeah, no, it doesn't count. Uh Uh-huh. Promise, but we have got to get low before him. Amen. As I was asking the Lord some of the issues that he has in America specifically, and then I'll jump to personally. I believe the Lord spoke to me two primary things. So I'm there in December after a 2020 like we had, praying about 2021. I had so much in mind. And the Lord just said to me, Jeremiah, the essence of revival or the messaging of revival is never dependent upon who lives in the White House. (laughs) <laughs> says the one who falsely prophesied who would be in the White House right now. That's a that's a convenient out. God, so God does, said it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter now. God does marketing. I mean, that's yeah. what he's... Uh, yeah. It yeah. has everything to do with who lives and sits above the circle of the earth. If the message of revival, if the essence of revival changes based on who lives in the White House, we're in trouble. The fire, the (laughs) power. This this is like, you know, like some kind of, you know, sleight of hand misdirection at this point. Prophetic misdirection. I think that'd be it. Right Ashen the zeal to burst forth this year to break through to advance. Breakthrough, breakthrough. is a prophecy bingo territory. Word. What it's primarily dependent upon is who sits on the throne. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus Christ. Lord right, was so very. We, yeah, a, a couple of things. And I was glad. Um, first, the Lord, I, I think it's rare that his name is mentioned. Uh, yes. <laughs> and he, he just did. Um, the second thing is, is he's on this one, he's not wrong. It no. doesn't really matter who's in the White House, but everything else doesn't fit that word. I mean, so like it matters that Jesus would, that Jesus is our Lord. That's our comfort. That's our peace. But, mm-hmm. but everything else around it doesn't make any sense to that. 
And, my and, question is, why, why, why do I need him to tell me this? Because I can open up my Bible and read passage after passage after passage uh, talking about how Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that there is no name, uh, you know, in heaven on earth that is above His name. So, you know, and, and you know, I'm just—I can read this out of my out of the scriptures over and over again. Why do I need Him to give me a fresh re-expression of that? Right, and and the the, the start was really good too. I was hopeful. Um, that's because <laughs> you both haven't driven my hopeful from me yet fully. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> there was hopeful that, that you we're going <laughs> to get fronted up to the mirror. We're going to look at the law of God, the perfect law of God. Right. But that it it didn't happen. It, it, no. it none, none of that happened. Um, yeah. And so his fresh word is sort of like a word, but not quite a word. And there's really no difference between that and uh, did God really say you mustn't eat from the tree in the midst of the garden? Um, I mean, there is like this close, but again, nothing is based on the, on the suffering and death of Jesus. And so yeah. it's so dramatically wrong. Yeah. And, 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 and his, he's trying to uh, cover his assets because of mm-hmm. the Trump problem. But when he yeah. really should be concerned about is the salvation of the people who he's, who are, are hearing him. Right. I mean, that, he should uh, be, lead, he should be leading the charge of what real biblical repentance looks like here, because he's, you can tell he's kind of steering people in the direction of some kind of personal repentance, looking to the mirror, but the payoff for them is not uh, being, you know, in right relationship and reconciled to God. Uh, the payoff is, is that they can be a part then and be prepared for the things that God is going to be doing and releasing in the year 2021. That's what he said earlier. Which is something completely different. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. unfortunate because, but he, but but you can tell that he, he he has in his mind that the only way out of it is Christianity. They have to yeah. forgive him for his false stuff, but he doesn't. He doesn't. It, there's no way to get there. I mean, like, why don't you just open the scriptures, dude? I mean, if you open the, like, I, is that forty four thousand, forty three thousand? Mm-hmm. 41, 41. It's, 41. It's, it's blurry. So, um, I mean, it's just, uh, if you open the scriptures, there's forgiveness for you. But like you said, model some Christian repentance. I'm, I'm, I'm giving this up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop telling you the future and I'm going to tell you about the son of mm-hmm. God. Cause he's yeah. the only thing that's going to save me and save you. Um, yeah. and, and, and when you're like fronted up to the mirror, if he fronts us up to the mirror and we're looking in the mirror and all we're seeing is ourselves, there's no hope there. Yeah. No, not at all. Not for no, him, that, not for you and me. That's know. that's law. That's it's, yeah, it's yeah. not even it's not even go, go gospel. It's just law. Well, you know, I, I need fresh law. for bingo, and we're not done until I get one yeah. of one of the really disgusting things about megachurches such as these is that the like you know these people who claim to be prophets of God will will say, oh, I was wrong, uh, you know, they, oh, God was wrong, or like, this wasn't quite right, so I must be forgiven. But as a congregant, if you miss your tithe. They send people to your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is that level. You, you of missed disgusting. a payment. We're gonna we're gonna turn off your uh, spiritual electricity. All right, let's uh, let's keep going here. Um, I, I'm looking at very time. clear let's, with let's, me in December. You've got to get this right. You've got to get your gaze on the one who sits on the throne. And then the next thing that the Lord said to me, it's it's sort of bizarre, I admit. He said, Jeremiah, one of my primary issues in the the body of Christ in America. God has issues. Wow. Is that there's too much or too many TED talks and not enough throne room talks. Oh no! So he's he's going the Larry Sparks route. We're 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 going after the entertainment uh, driven. <laughs> That's it. We found the problem. It's TED Talks. Yeah, we found it, 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 it's the problem. It's not the false prophecies. It's the TED Talk. Can't be that. <laughs> it has to be the TED Talks. It yeah, can't be actual sin. It, no, it, it has no. to be a made up sin. TED yeah, Talk it, is it, the problem. It, this this is Adam. You know, it, it, it's your fault, God. The woman that you gave me. So you when know, I. When I she, when I go to sleep at night and I'm worried about what I've done, I yeah. well, at least I haven't done a TED talk because that's right. the real problem. Yeah, that's but the real problem. you do hold conferences. Yeah. yeah. Have you thought about that? <laughs> <laughs> I got a prophetic word for you and it's fresh. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. 
All right, oh, moving no. along. The word is a plumb line that is changing our paradigm. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's Random see what this goes. Just saw an angel coming, shifting paradigms, shifting paradigms. Shifting is a uh, props to bingo word. And I saw a layer of an old belief system. Do, do you uh, do, do you get the uh, the gals who used to be on the tall flag team uh, waving their flags on you know during at, on the altar while you're you know, maybe doing the verba and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, I I could see that happening, but I suspect that that fire and brimstone is going to be behind my head uh, after <laughs> after. Because I went to the well one too many times making fun of the basement guy. It's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't need prophetic hoochie dancers. So much yeah, so much for no. being my PS4 friend. We're right. done. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're f- totally expecting, you know, like great white sharks eating your head off and things like that. But that's a whole uh, I'm issue. all right. <laughs> yeah. It looks like an escaped convict. Changing now. Paradigms are shifting now. Paradigms are changing now. Paradigms are shifting now today. I say there's a change in the atmosphere. There's a change. I got atmosphere. atmosphere. Atmosphere is a prophecy bingo word. <laughs> it's been so people don't like it. People don't like it if they're around you, you, me. You've and come a through your, your bingo dry season now. You're, you're, I was yeah. awful. I was I, I was thinking that I had to ascend and get higher okay. and higher and higher. You're right, right. Okay, let's keep going. Of what here. you believe here, there's a change. There's a change where the word of God is rising high. It's like a bad prophetic Broadway musical, man. Okay. It, Make it you know. stop. <laughs> yeah, I, this I, is I this think, isn't think, wicked. It's wickeder. I think you know? we should we should we should not melt Br- Borkhard's brain for much longer. <laughs> I I'm in agreement. Uh, oh no, gosh, no, no, no. him again? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I gotta come back to him. Hang on a second. All right. To All speak right, out to the real leader of this nation. He's d- tripling down now, too. This is on please, February please, please. 2nd. I am called to call to you the authentic leader of this nation. And the Lord is having me say my words very deliberate. I am here to call out to the, listen once again, the legitimate real leader of this nation. Oh, I know where I've seen this hair before. Elvira. I don't know. I'm getting really big uh, Billy Ray Cyrus vibes. (laughs) I'm telling you, he stole Elvira's wig. I'm just saying. I am a prophet of God. And I heard the plans of the enemy in their bedchamber, in their secret place. And they have devised a plan. And this plan is going to be in a certain place at a certain time. And it's going to be a 911 type weighty emergency that is going to take place in their plans. They've planned it to happen in 2021 and 2022. It will be an emergency to the level of 9-11. I didn't say it would be like 9-11. I said it would be that kind of emergency. 
A uh, difference that makes no difference is no difference at all. Okay. Oh, this if, guy's a peeping Tom prophet. He I, knows what's yeah. going on in the bed in, chamber of in the, the bed enemy. Chamber. He's That's peeking right. around but, the corner. He knows what's going on in yeah, the devil's and, bed and, chamber. And by the way, I didn't take it, but I need to take it now. Enemy. Ding. Dag nap okay. it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm getting skunked this game. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's keep they going are here. allowed to do so. It is going to... Uh, in, in, by 2030, there will be a horrendous emergency <laughs> that will change everything forever if their plans succeed. 2030, 2031, <laughs> and right into 2032. And they said to tell you. To te- you couldn't even get 2021 right. No, okay, I, I, he, he got he totally got it wrong on Trump being reelected, and he's telling me what's going to take place in 2032. This is the vaguest garbage ever. It's like enemies are doing things, and things will happen at different times. Right, because it's and, an and emergency. if they succeed, it'll even be more of an emergency. I just need fresh. Just say fresh, man. <laughs> I just right, need so, put me out so, of my misery. Just say so. Fred. So he, here's what we do. Here's what we do at the at the end of prophecy bingo. We always give two uh, yes. bonus words. Okay, there are two bonus words, and here and here's here's the rules. Okay, are you ready? Yes. You're you're gonna have to like the video. I totally will. And, and you have to subscribe to the channel. Already done. Okay. <laughs> All right, so hang on a second. I, I, I'm feeling a download. It, it's coming upon me right now, and oh, I feel a prophetic word, and it's fresh. Uh, bingo! <laughs> bingo was his name of. All right, now, now, now that being the case, I cannot get to word number two until you utter your prophetic utterance here. Timing. <laughs> this is all about timing. A fresh rhema from God. Begetting, birthing. <laughs> that was great. www.higherthings.org. Well done. Well done. Uh, I'm, I'm done. I'll never be invited back again. Love us. We- yeah, that's hilarious. Wilkin <laughs> Wilkin said never again. He said I never again. It's never again. You, you know, when it, Borghart's all I can tell it's never going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> They're never going to have me back. I, yeah, I, I, it was one too many jokes about the basement. It's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have thick skin. I'm all right. All right. Well, all right. So here's our second. Here's our second word, and I, I'm not going to give myself a double bingo at this point. We'll, we'll maintain a tie. Uh, the the second word is going to be release. There we go. So if you have that, you can add that to your prophecy bingo <laughs> words. And uh, gentlemen, I want to uh, thank you for your time uh, in uh, meeting today to do prophecy bingo. George, it was such a lot of fun to uh, to have you on. And if you, uh, if you ever need someone to endure two hours of pain and suffering, <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> there we go. Good, good, good to know. This is a good lot more fun than I expected it to be. Thank you yep. very much. And then, uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, higher things. You just gave us a website address: www.higherthings.org. And uh, and th- there's some wonderful resources, good articles and things like that that are available. And uh, and like we talked about, higher things is uh, dedicated to. Uh, to catechizing the youth and 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 doing so with a focus on Christ and Him crucified, so it's it's highly grounded in the Word and deeply deeply uh, anchored in the uh, in the gospel itself, and uh, and so uh, you know the resources there are just phenomenal, and I would even argue as an adult the uh, the resources are phenomenal. I, I'm 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 a guy who reads the reflections every day, so. You know, I, I yeah, I'm still a I'm still a higher things fan of uh, of the big of the big of a big kind. So, thank you for your time, gentlemen. I'm going to sign off here with the uh, audience. I'll talk to you guys as soon as we're done. Give me just a second here. Uh, so, if you found this helpful or enjoyable, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in uh, in the description. And uh, let me thank you for your time. And uh, and also, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ in his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.